This last video on looking at functions focuses on dates. Now the first thing you need to understand when you get into dates is that dates are actually stored in Excel as numbers. Once you get this idea, a lot of the functions make a lot more sense and these dates are much more, much more pleasant to deal with. Let me show you what I mean. So inside of Excel, you sometimes will type in a date like say January 1st, 2020. When I hit enter, you're gonna see that it doesn't actually stay as what I put into it. Instead, it converts into this form I have here, 1 January 20. And as you play more with Excel, you'll realize there's ways to format numbers. So if I go to more number formats over here, it's going to open up a whole other list of options that I can do for showing dates. So I go to dates, and I can show it with the full name, Wednesday, January 1st. I can show it with short version, day, month. I can show it with codes. There's a whole lot of ways I can show a dates. Now the reason why this works inside of Excel is because internally it's not actually storing the words March 1st, January 1st, February 1st, whatever. Instead, it's actually converting what you type into a number. Basically, if you type in something into an Excel cell like Gen 1st, Excel actually runs some code over it to see does this look like a date or not. When I hit enter, you'll see it says yes, that looks like a date. So it goes ahead and converts it into a date format. If I type in something that it doesn't recognize, you'll see it just leaves it as text. And you have that left alignment, and now none of that formatting is going to work on it. So what's really happening here is that when you type it in, Excel is going to transform whatever you type in into a number of days. So if I convert this into a normal number format, you see it changed January into 43,831 days. Now you might ask, days since when? If I put in day one into the Excel here, I then format one as a date, you'll see it changes into January 1st, 00. Now that's actually not uh, 2000, it's actually 1900, which you can see if you change it into a long date. Sunday, January 1st, 1900. If I type in a date before this, so if I type in January 1, 1900, you'll see that it transformed. If I type in January 1st, 1899, you'll see it doesn't convert. And that's because Excel can only handle dates after January 1st, 1900. And that's because January 1st is the first day according to Excel. So if I'm going to type in today's date, or for example, let's we'll start with January 1st, 1900, I can actually treat this like a number because under the hood, it just is a number. If I take this and add one to it, I'm saying to add one day to January 1st. Now it's January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, 5th, 6th, all the way down. If I take this number and add 366 to it, you'll see it pops over into the next year. Again, these are just numbers. If I take this and turn it back into a number format, you'll see this is day zero, sorry, day one, day two, day three, four, five, all the way up to where we are one year later. Now, why is this important? This is important because it helps you understand how the date functions are actually working. So the most basic function to play with is just now or today. Now returns the current date and time, and today just returns the current date. The way this works is that the now function is actually returning a number. So if I come over here and type in equals now, it looks good, I have the current date, but then I can format that cell as a regular comma style, and you'll see actually that it changes. Today is 43,906 days since January 1st, 1900 basically the number of days since Excel thinks the world began. So then we get into time, all right? Time is more easy to understand if you realize that it's just, again, thinking in days. Right now, you see that it put 0.42. This kind of makes sense if you think about it for a second. Let's say you have a time like 6 a.m. 6 a.m. is a quarter of a day. You can think about that by saying, all right, how many hours are there in a day? Oh, there's 24 hours in a day. How much is 6 divided by 24? A quarter. Or you can do 12 p.m., which is noon. 12 p.m. is half of a day because you've got 24 hours in a day, and 12 is half of that. 6 p.m. is 3 quarters of a day because now you have all the time until 12, which is 12, plus 6 hours after there, so it's 18. Or you can just do uh, 11... 59 p.m. 
and now we have almost a full day. Now all of these numbers, if I take these numbers and convert it from formatting as a time to formatting as a number, you'll see what's going on under the hood. So you see here that I have the first time, 6 a.m., is indeed a quarter of a day. 12 p.m., noon, is half a day. 6 p.m. is 0.75, or 3 quarters of a day. And then 11.59 is almost a full day. We just did a little tiny bit short there at the end. And you see up here, Excel's got a really long number to express that. So this, again, you have to understand that Excel thinks of everything as a day. And so to convert from days to hours, you're just going to do a basic division problem. Let's say I was going to ask you how many hours are in a day. Or let's say if I got two days. How many hours is that total? Well, if you think about it for a second, well, there's two days multiplied by how many hours there are in a day, so 24 hours. So two days turn into 48 hours. Or you can think of how many minutes. Well, we're just going to do another multiplication. How many minutes are in each hour? Well, 60. So I can come back up here and say, okay, one day is 24 hours or 1,440 1, minutes. Or you can even go down to seconds. I take this and multiply by 60 again, and I get number of seconds. So why is this useful? Well, this is useful for when you want to do math with times. Let's say you've got a check-in and check-out time. Someone is checking in at 6 a.m. and checking out at 12 p.m. So this is, just a reminder, a quarter of a day, and this is a half a day. If I'm asking what's the difference between these two numbers, I'm going to take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. So a half minus a quarter is a quarter, which is why it shows 6 a.m. If I want to think of it not as a time, but as a number, which I probably do, you'll see that it's, again, 0.25, because it just comes down to how Excel displays dates and times it's just a regular number in terms of days, and then it gives you the result. But what if I want to know how many hours are between the two here? Well, if I know it's a quarter of a day, but I want the difference in hours, you have to think, well, how, how do you convert from days to hours? Well, just like I did up here, I turn one day into 24 hours by multiplying it by 24. Same thing here. If I've got a quarter of a day, and I multiply it by 24, hours, because again, I'm converting from days into hours, you'll see that the difference is 6. So difference between 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. is 0.25 of a day, or when multiplied by 24, 6 hours. We do the same thing for 6 p.m. So now I have got 1 quarter to 3 quarters of a day. So now the difference here is half of a day. If I want to know the number in hours, I have 12, because I multiply half of a day, 0.5, by 24, because that's how many hours are in the day. So it may seem a little bit odd to play with Excel dates and times like this, but it makes it really easy to do manipulation with hours and times for things like time cards or durations. But the key thing to remember is that it all comes down to just days. And if you want the answer in something else, just change it from days into hours, I multiply by 24. Other thing to remember is if you type into a cell and then delete later, this cell is still formatted like a time. So if I type a new value in here, you're going to get this kind of odd looking result sometimes. So just remember, the value in a cell is different from the way it's displayed. And you can change that to say if you want to have it be time or number or any other value in there. So now that you see how dates are actually working. This will help you understand what's going on underneath the hoods here. So the now function is returning today's date with a decimal on the end. The decimal represents how much of the current day we've already used. So right now it's 10.08 a.m., which is 0.4225 of a day. Today is similar. It's going to give you today's date, but it doesn't include the time at the end here. Sometimes you want now, sometimes you want today. It just depends on if you want to have the time or not. Now you can always display both of these as a short date. It's the same exact thing. But sometimes if you choose a number format that has both day and time, then you'll start seeing a little bit of difference. For example, if I choose this format here, has month, day, year, and then time, click OK, you'll see that 
to now is giving me the actual date and the actual time, whereas today just gives me the current date and then zero for the time. Network days is another useful function to play with. You're going to give network days two different values. One is going to be the first day, one is going to be the last day. Then it returns a number of working days between the two dates. In other words, anything except for Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes you'll want to pull out a piece of a date. So I have a number here, January 1st, 19. I can change that, of course, to be a regular number. So that number is 43,466. But I want to show it as a date. But what if I just want to know the day of the month? Well, I want to use a day function. That's going to look at that and pull out just the day by itself. Same thing for year, same thing for month. Now, this also means that it's tricky to create a date inside of a function. And that's again is because when we create a date, we're actually creating a number as Excel looks at what we typed in and changes it to a number variable. Now, if we want to do that manually inside of a cell, I can use the date function. Date is going to pull in a year, a month, and a day value and turn that into an actual date. And you can verify it's creating a date by looking at it in comma style for a second here. So you can see by giving it 2001, 1, and 23, it turns it into a number called 36,914. Or if I go to today's date, 2020, 3, 16, then you'll see that it comes back to 43,906. And if I format this as a date, you'll see now it's 316, 2020. Same thing with time. I can pull pieces out of a time like hours and minutes. There actually isn't a seconds one, so we can use this function called text, which has a whole bunch of different stuff. But basically, I ask text to format a number as a text value, and I give it a format string, which you can learn about later on. We also can create a time. Again, it's a very similar process to creating a date. So now that you've played with this, go ahead and try to solve the problems below.